it is a big world out there, but we are easy to locate. We are Lamb of God Lutheran Church, located at 2791 Inca Drive in the junction of Inca Way in Lake Havasu City, Arizona. Lamb of God is a member of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, Southwest District. Welcome to Lamb of God Lutheran Church on this third Sunday of Easter. Our sermon is titled, God With Us, and is presented by Deacon Joe Tinsley. Welcome to our worship service. Good morning. morning. Boy, it's good to see a crowd this large after Easter. It usually starts diminishing quite a way. So the first question I will ask is, do we have any first-time visitors with us this morning? We had a pair last night, a new couple moved into town, and they're going to be with us. Well, that's good. So the next question is, how many are leaving this week or next? One, two, three, four, four. All right, well, it's that time. I know every time it hits 90 degrees, the snowbirds fly, you know. (laughs) Gets a little warm for them. Welcome one and all. And Dennis is not with us this morning because he had vertigo when he got up this morning. He's had another session of that. Uh, He did fall, but he's not hurt. He's doing well. So as we get older, I think vertigo is a thing we just start to learn to live with. I get it about four times a year. And Pastor is back at his cousin's funeral, and he should be back Monday or Tuesday. I'm not sure which day. So, all right, let us begin. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Please join in our opening hymn, 785, We Praise You, O God. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we begin. Amen. Jesus said, if anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant also be. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. 
speaking the truth in love, we are to go up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul, O my God, in you I trust. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenants and his testimonies. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. And let all the people say, Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. O Lord God Almighty, we confess that we are sinful human beings by nature and by deed. We haven't put you first at all times. We haven't followed in the ways you have set forth for us. We haven't always been thoughtful caretakers of your creation and haven't shared its bounty on all occasions. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Forgive us all our sins, and finally, by your grace, bring us to everlasting life. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, grant us pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all our sins. As a called servant of the word of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. I am the good shepherd, I know my own, and my own know me, and lay down my life for the sheep. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures, he leads me beside still waters, he restores my soul, he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Please join in the Kyrie and the glory in Excelsis. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Risen and ascended Lord, you are the good shepherd. You lay down your life for the sheep. They are yours. Empower your church to reach every sheep that belongs to you and to give witness until you have brought all your sheep into one fold. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
The first reading is from Acts chapter 4, beginning at the first verse. As they were speaking to the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, greatly annoyed, because they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they arrested them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already the evening. But many of those who had heard the word believed, and the number of men came to about 5,000. On the next day, their rulers and elders and scribes gathered together in Jerusalem with Annas and the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and all who were of the high priestly family. And when they had set them in the midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name do you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are being examined today concerning a good deed done to a crippled man, by what means this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle is from 1 John chapter 3, beginning at the 16th verse. By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. By this we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure our heart before him. For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and he knows everything. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. Whoever keeps his commandments abides in him, and he in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit whom he has given us. This is the word of the Lord. God. It's time for the children's sermon, so if the... Children would come forward. Good morning, girls. You doing good this morning? Uh, this is for these children, but it's also for all the children of God. Do you know the parable of the lost sheep? Have you heard that story? No? How about you guys? You know the parable of the lost sheep? Yeah. Okay. Can you describe what a parable is? Anybody? Story? Okay, yeah, parables are often described as earthly stories with heavenly meanings. And Jesus used these stories and took his disciples and followers out to understand and help them grasp the new concepts that he was teaching. And in this parable, the shepherd is the keeper of the sheep. The 99 sheep were all safe and together in the fold, and they depended upon each other. And the lost sheep, the one that wandered away, okay, however, was in grave danger because he was left alone out in the cold and where the wolves could attack, all right? The predators could get to him. Now, each sheep in the fold is important. It's unthinkable to a shepherd to lose even one sheep, okay? No matter how many that he has, as the good shepherd... Jesus felt it was completely worthwhile to spend the time to go off to find the one who was lost as opposed to the 99. 
And Jesus teaches this lesson to a group of the elders and those who are leaders. He asks them, would you not go after the lost sheep? And wouldn't you be happy when you found that lost sheep? When you lose something and then you find it, aren't you happy? Well, especially if it's valuable to you, right? Then Jesus said to them, in the same way there is more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over the 99 who are righteous, who are believers. And the Bible teaches us that we are like these sheep, are we not? Don't we stray away from God from time to time? Hmm? Yeah, you betcha. That makes God really sad. He doesn't like to see you stray away. But he never gives up on you. Remember that. He is with you always, and he will never forsake you. He keeps searching for you and for calling for you. And he wants to draw you back into his arms where you will be safe. He even sent Jesus, his son, to save all of us who wander away and are lost. Aren't you glad that God doesn't give up on you and won't ever give up on you? I am because I was one of those lost sheep. But praise God, I am found, just like you guys are. You're safe and you're in the fold. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, you are the good shepherd. We are thankful that you came to save those who are lost. Amen. Thank you, girls, for coming up. May I have you please rise for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not in this fold. I must bring them also. They will listen to my voice, so there will be one flock one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Please join in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crude and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated and join in our sermon hymn, 740, I Am Jesus' Little Lamb.
May grace and peace be multiplied unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we look at Christian love. As Christians, we should recognize Christian love is a sacrificial love. The requirement for sharing such love with those in need doesn't often come when it's convenient to us. It rarely comes when we are prepared to supply it from an abundance of our time, talent, and treasure. No, it most often is needed when we are least prepared and least willing to share it. Thus enters our old Adam. Our malady is placing our needs and our desires above God's will and God's word. We see in today's reading in Acts chapter 4, verses 1 through 3, there was a negative reaction to Peter's preaching, and he was interrupted. The priests were those responsible for this week's various temple duties. The captain of the temple guard was responsible for order in the temple courts and was second in rank only to the high priest. The Sadducees were one of several schools of religious thought among the Jews, and they came from various priestly families and effectively controlled what happened in the temple. And the high priest was chosen from their circles, and he presided over Israel's high court, the Sanhedrin. The apostles, preaching, greatly disturbed the Sanhedrin. For one thing, the apostles were teaching the people without authorization from the Sanhedrin. More important, Peter was proclaiming Jesus as the Messiah. The Sadducees didn't believe in a personal Messiah. Most significantly, Peter was preaching that Jesus rose from the dead. The Sadducees did not believe in resurrection. This presented a problem for them because if Jesus rose, they could not deny that such a thing as resurrection existed. Although they were like free thinkers in religion, the Sadducees were very conservative when it came to political matters. They were satisfied with the way things were under Roman control. And any preaching that might in any way disturb the status quo was not appreciated. Oh, how our old Adam arises, placing their needs and their desires above God's will and God's word. The Sanhedrin was made up of 70 to 72 rulers, elders and teachers of the law. And the teachers of the law were professional interpreters of Scripture. Hmm, that's kind of questionable. Many of these men also were Pharisees, yet they totally missed what Scripture, God's Word, had to say. Or... They deferred their knowledge to placing their needs and their desires above God's will and God's word. I personally prefer this second explanation. As Nicodemus came to Jesus in the night saying, we know you are from God. The we states there may have been many, several for sure, who knew and believed Jesus was the Messiah. But they were unwilling to sacrifice their needs and their desires for the love of God, a sacrificial love. However, in the end, Nicodemus did go public with Joseph of Arimathea for Jesus' burial. Based on the politics of the time, I guess I have to admit that that was a significant sacrifice. Scripture doesn't tell us, but they could have lost all of their power and authority. The religious leaders that tried Jesus of Nazareth condemned him to die and condemned him to die. Now sat in the customary semicircle 
questioning two of Jesus' followers, Peter and John, about healing a crippled man. In Acts chapter 3, verses 6 through 8, a beggar asked the apostles for money. Peter answered, saying, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. And then he went with them into the temple courts, wailing and jumping and praising God. Thus, the aristocracy and power structure were determined to stop the preaching of the apostles. But the message was already out and doing its work. Acts chapter 4, verse 4 confirms, Many who heard the message believed, and the number of men grew to about 5,000. Men here does not mean just people. It means males. With women and children, the number of Christians may have exceeded 10,000. These statistics are not given by Luke to bolster the reputation of the apostles. Rather, they are a testimony to the power of the gospel. In this questioning, the opening statement of the Sanhedrin was very similar to the demand they once made of Jesus when he taught in the temple courts. That was, tell us by what authority you are doing these things. On neither occasion was this question friendly or sincere. It was designed to trap the apostles in blasphemy, which was a death sentence. Isn't it interesting the authorities didn't ask how the crippled man had been healed. They simply referred to the healing as this, referring and thus refusing to acknowledge the miracle and suggesting that it was unauthorized and therefore wrong. In short, they were accusing. Where do people like you get the authority to do these things? They only asked that which supported their needs and their desires, which they held above God's word and God's will. So, if we are to sacrifice our needs and our desires for God's will and his word, let's take a look at what Jesus has to say about sacrificial love. In her gospel reading, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd does not own the sheep. Seeing the wolf coming, and he leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. The shepherd has been identified as meaning Jesus in John chapter 10, verses 2 and 4. Some, however, feel that in that context, in contrast to the thieves and the robbers, the shepherd represents the true prophet or priest or pastor of God. That comes directly from Acts 20, verse 28. They see the illustration representing God's church as those who shepherd it versus those who try to harm it. That interpretation is possible, in which case Jesus purposely switches here to I am the good shepherd to identify himself. Once again, he spoke words we associate with Yahweh, I am. Jesus is the good, beautiful, noble, excellent shepherd. This shepherd excels in every respect beyond any other shepherd. He is unique. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Using the figure of the shepherd, Jesus prophesies his death at Calvary, 
which at this time was only a few months away. Three times in the book of John, he mentions laying down his life on behalf of and in place of his sheep. He explains a little more about what he means each time he tells them. Ordinary shepherds protect the sheep, but they do not die for their sheep. The good shepherd is extraordinary. In contrast, the hired hand won't take any risk. When trouble comes, he disappears. The hired hand is like those church leaders who think more of their own well-being than serving God's flock. They are not true shepherds. They do not feel any personal responsibility for the sheep. They do the job to make a living. When the wolves come, they show their real colors. They abandon the flock and they let the wolves ravage and scatter it. The wolf is the enemy who, if unchecked, will destroy the flock and keep it from the good shepherd. Every false teacher is such a wolf. Jesus warns us to watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. The leader of such a wolf pack as Jesus had told the Pharisees earlier in John chapter 8, is the devil. Jesus was prepared to give up his life to save us from the devil. Jesus, the good shepherd, does not lose his sheep. He knows us, and he has led us to know him. He has created a bond between us like between the Father and him. This knowledge surpasses just recognizing each other. Even the devil recognizes Jesus, and he fears him. This knowledge, binding one to the other, is love. As the good shepherd, Jesus gave up his life to secure that bond and keep his sheep safe. He died for all the world. John 3.16, and his sheep all over the world received the benefit. Many thought that the Messiah would come only for the Jews, but Jesus corrected this perception. He said, and I have other sheep that are not in this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice, so that there will be one flock, one shepherd. The other sheep, not of the pen, were the Gentiles, who were also chosen by God for eternity. The one flock is the Holy Christian Church, the sum total of believers, which we will see in all its unity when it enters into heaven with the Good Shepherd. For now, it is invisible, because true faith lies in the hearts of people. So love, as presented by Jesus, is placing God's will and God's word above our needs and our desires, a sacrificial love. John chapter 14, verses 15 through 17 tells us, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Our epistle reading assures us, By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him. How does God's love abide in him? The source of all love, the ultimate example and pattern for love, is Jesus Christ. His self-sacrifice on Calvary's cross, 
not only bought us the forgiveness we need to be God's children again, it also inspires us to love and to forgive people in our lives. Jesus' parable of the unmerciful debtor shows the comparative size of the debt we owe and are owed. What a joy it is to honor Christ by showing compassion to other people. Jesus' sacrifice is the motivating fire that drives us, should drive us, to do what he commands us. The very opposite of Cain's murderous hatred is Christian's willingness to sacrifice himself for a brother or a sister. It's no coincidence that Christians have been the leaders in developing the ministries and mercies in many countries all over the world. Hospitals, schools, orphanages, food pantries, and safe places for the handicapped and the elderly. Christians with resources who won't help people in need better check for a spiritual pulse. Verse 18, little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and truth. It's a passionate plea for Christians to get rid of the double-mindedness that we have. Talking the talk without walking the walk doesn't fool very many people. As James pointed out in his second chapter, if you have a spare blanket and all you do for a shivering brother or sister is say, keep warm, your so-called faith is dead. An illusion, or an illustration. In the sports world, it's common for the agents to say to the owners, show me the money. In other words, don't praise my client and say how important he is for your team and then offer peanuts. Your cash offer shows what you really think. What we offer shows what we really think. Again, I say, dear children, let us not love with words and tongue only, but with actions and truth. Yes, and to do so will involve relinquishing our self-worth while placing God's will and God's word above all else, a sacrificial love. Now go trusting in God's living word, Jesus Christ. Constantly study God's written word, his holy scriptures. In doing so, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We will now continue with our offering.
Please rise for the offering prayer. Let us pray together. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. Now, our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you, and we have given you only what comes from your hand. Amen. Please join in the offertory. Trusting in God's loving response, we pray for the church and all who are called to lives of service to God's people, asking that the Lord will bless his under-shepherds and all who care for his flock. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for ourselves and that the Holy Spirit guide us into gracious ways and instill in us holy confidence in the goodness of our God aiding us in our prayers. We give thanks for the faithful examples set by those whose earthly journeys <clears throat> are complete and whose witnesses to Christ will inspire us. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the blessing of God upon our nation and its leaders that we may lead peaceful lives. We also pray for all those who need your healing and restoration. We lift up, Lord, this world as it goes closer and closer to war. And we ask, Lord, that you intervene and bring peace. All that is happening right now in the Middle East is very dangerous, Lord, and we ask your intervention that peace may be restored and retained. We lift up before you, Lord, our congregation and those that worship with us. Be with each and every one of them for their needs. We lift up our homebound, Lord, for their strength and healing and their faith, Lord, and especially for companionship, that the visitations bring them joy and peace. We ask you be with our military personnel and our first responders as they serve this great country and the local communities. Protect them and guide them in their work, Lord. Lord, in your mercy. These things and all else that we should have asked, grant us according to your gracious will. O oh Lord, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Join in our mission verse. Jesus said, You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Lord, 
Jesus said, go and baptize the nations, the people, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, go and teach the nations to observe all that I have commanded you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Please join in our closing hymn, 711. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Thank you all for being here. Go with God's blessings. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. We pray our message of hope from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ lifts you up and strengthens you for the coming week. Have a blessed week. For information about us, please visit our website at lambofgodlhcaz.org. That's Lamb of God. LHCAZ.org.